What's up guys, of all the iPhone 14 models, the priciest iPhone 14 Pro Max variant has apparently been the most successful so far, followed by the smaller iPhone 14 Pro. This could have implications for how Apple positions next year's rumored iPhone 15 Ultra and iPhone 15 Pro. The 6.1 inch iPhone 14 and the 6.7 inch iPhone 14 Plus are very modest upgrades over the 2021 counterparts, whereas the 6.1 inch iPhone 14 Pro and 6.7 inch iPhone 14 Pro Max got a new front design with a dynamic island, the faster A16 Bionic chip and a higher resolution main camera. Demand for the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus is apparently so low that Apple has diverted production capacity to the Pro models, and according to famed Apple analyst Minchi Kuo, the iPhone 14 Pro Max accounts for nearly 60% of the total order increase for the Pro variants. This implies that iPhone fans are okay with paying more for Pro features, and Kuo believes the popularity of the expensive model could encourage Apple to create greater differentiation between next year's iPhone 15 Pro Max, which a couple of recent rumors say will be known as the iPhone 15 Ultra, and the iPhone 15 Pro. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman recently said to expect bigger changes next year with the iPhone 15 Ultra, but stopped short of revealing what it may bring to the table. Some sources have indicated that only the iPhone 15 Ultra will flaunt a periscope camera for better zoom. Whether this means the iPhone 15 Ultra will have a quad camera setup remains to be seen. Some less believable leaks have suggested that it could feature two front cameras, 8K video recording and increased base storage that might be pricier than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The Pro models will most likely be powered by the A17 chip, but given the current disagreement between Apple and TSMC, it is not clear if it will be a 3 nanometers chip. The thing is that Apple refuses to pay the 3% price hike that TSMC requested. Right now, the only differences between the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max's screen size and battery capacity. The iPhone 15 is still around a year away, so nothing can be said for certain about this series. By the way, according to a renowned Apple analyst, Mark Gurman, the company doesn't have enough products to hold a dedicated event in October, so it might have decided to launch them with separate press releases instead. So it might have decided to launch them with separate press releases instead. The Cupertino-based firm believes that a couple of press releases spaced apart are more effective than a full-blown at this point in time. It's not the first time Apple chooses to do so. Apple has previously unveiled new products with press releases outside of the core iPhone lineup, and there aren't any rumors or teasers coming out of Apple regarding an October event. Gurman believes that by the end of this year, the tech giant will introduce the M2 and M2 Pro powered Mac Mini, 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros with M2 Pro and M2 Max chips, and possibly 11-inch and 12.9-inch iPod Pros with vanilla M2 chips. Even if Apple introduces new Mac Pro next month, deliveries will likely start next year. The announcement of a second-generation AirPods Max seems to be less likely, but a refreshed Apple TV with the A14 chip and more RAM seems to be on the card. Anyway, we will keep you updated, so subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, good luck everyone!